Live from the Treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona, it's Knox Conscious with Chris Woodsy Peralta and Mark Poles. From the home office in Gilbert, Arizona, welcome. Hi. Buenvenidos, all the peoples. How's everyone doing? We are doing well, sir. Hello to Checkmark. Hello. Little Checkmark says hello. He lost his mug downstairs. He's still being washed. <laughs> it's not really lost. No, my mom is washing it you're, by you hand. Ha, you have possession of it. She's washing it by hand down at the river. Cause they, <laughs> With they the know, laundry. They know so that your chonies and your mug are going to be yes. squeaky clean. Bro. And then they're going to play some wash border, like <laughs> get a little So it's like air guitar, together. but different. Yes. Uh, air washboard. Yes. yes, very good. Yes. Sir, yes, sir. not conscious. How are you? I'm muy bien. Happy Sunday. Sunday, ha- Sunday. Da, da, and other da, da, words too. Today is uh, Sunday. December 13th. Sure. I believe. Whatever you say, bro. 2020. Bank day, bank day. We're getting there. Yeah. Fun stuff. What are we doing today? Uh, well, first of all, sir, we do have a, uh, I have a presentation to make. Pre- like, uh, do you have, did you bring a PowerPoint? I have a deck, bro. Oh, nice. Well, you also have like the other kind. Uh, hey now. So we apparently in the studio are in the podcast recording studio. We are slowly collecting paraphernalia of the trinket sort. Time out. Like, paraphernalia is a very scary term. Not that kind of paraphernalia. No, like toys and shit. Yeah, trink knickknacks. Yeah, trinkets. I'm not a drug addict for Christ's sake. Whoa. I don't even. I never even see a fucking drug. So, yes, we have uh, Special Agent Orange from Trading Places, and we have uh, uh, we have uh, the Slayer mascot, and we have some tequila, and we have some uh, vodka. So, uh, I have uh, a presentation to make. I have, I'm not kidding, to all the iTunes listeners, I have a Beanie Baby to present to Checkmark. Beanie? It is a Beanie Baby. They are so popular right they now. They were Czech so popular. Republic. No, they are 25 so popular. years ago. No, they are And in Czech, Czech Republic, Republic, they're huge. They're hot. They're so huge. I this present, is my Trump impression, right? It's huge. It's going to be the biggest ever. Well, when huge. you do that, you have to do the seal arms. Huge. 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 <laughs> it's going to be huge and ever. Ever, yes. <laughs> so I like to present Checkmark with the latest of our trinkets, the pterodactyl no. Beanie Baby. That... Is it the is best. Li- Caca! Rot! That is going to so have here to you hover. Are, sir. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> this bad boy is going to have to hover <laughs> over Caca, all. Rot! So, rot! <laughs> when you're ha- the next time you're having sex, make sure you text me. Okay. I will run like in. during? Yeah, during. During. Well, I mean. Like. I'll probably have to be next door because, like, I know I don't go for 30 minutes. I'm just going to assume you don't. Because we're 20, 30 minutes 20, away. 29, 30 minutes. Uh, if you can go 30 minutes, then yeah, just minutes. text me the second you start the coitus. <laughs> the coitus. <laughs> and, and we'll come in and go, rah, rah, No, that's not going to happen, rah. bro. Okay. This is not conscious, but that was a perfect segue. I love it. I'm anti uh, pterodactyl sex, bro. That's not my thing, dude. Okay. I, I'm good with that. Uh, I think he's going to stay. We can hang it from the ceiling with some, you know, fishing line or something. Check that out, bro. Check me out. Check him out. He's good now. Hell yeah. Well, thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're and welcome. We accept trinkets from anyone as long yeah. as they don't have, like, white powder like anthrax on them or something. <laughs> well, unless it's a CD from the band Anthrax. Did they do flower? Did they do that in a promotion sometime? Like, where they open it up and it's got powder? No, they've never, ever, 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 ever done that. That would be pretty cool, though. If they no, did. it would not be cool. Bro. No, it wouldn't go over well. It's like, no. oh, it's promotion promotion gone poorly. I did like that when there was the big anthrax scare, like in the nineties. They did make a statement that they that they were not going to change their name. Like, That's good. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck those guys. We're not changing our name. We've been anthrax since nineteen eighty one. Yeah, just because they're an anthrax scare, it is a type of chemical. Big deal. Like it's not. It's like guns. It's like it's not about the gun. It's about the person using it. Like if you use it for nefarious reasons. Has nothing to do with the actual. The chemical is not a guilty party. Chemical warfare. Oh, that's Slayer, not Anthrax. No, I'm thinking like Sky and I. That smells like almonds. What are we talking about today, Mark? Today we what are. What is gonna, today's topic? We're finally closing it out. Thank the gods. And I knew, I knew the second I I watched this one that you didn't, you weren't all in. I'm, it's okay. Dude, I'm always all in. With I know you, you're all in. Snooker doodle. We are always all in. Yes. But let's be honest. It went into politics, and you and I. 
we i am i am more politically minded than yourself or i care more whatever the word is no you what, just talk more about it oh uh, yes more but no let's just it. let's just be clear i give a shit a lot less was that would you say that's like that well that's the <laughs> truth i mean and i don't that's not a criticism that is that is just that's who you are and, and we we have clearly stated we are not a politics or yeah any, we don't we, wish we don't to, do it. right right we talk shit about certain people but that's because they did us Text harm by me texting at 12 us 4 a.m at midnight thank you very much i was a little upset that day that bitch oh i mean sorry that not a nice person that did that to me the loser of the election the loser of um, that race that's that just correct. tells you how influential we are but we we're not we we don't do we don't do politics however century itself did kind of lean heavily in politics on this one part four part four out. part four eight people sipping wine and kettering is very the, strange title it is a strange title and i found did you find in the documentary where they said it yes okay it was that just towards a weird the, play. the last three yeah. quarters yeah it's like why the fuck would it, you it, call it that i didn't like a lot of the title names i'm not gonna lie i would agree with you but the documentary is fucking sound do you wish to give a 49 second recap of what the century of the self is sir yes sir i would love that okay i would love if you probably oh i see the stick of fury being a no. oh emanate oh oh we've got lotion can, can you show us a lotion fucking dry skin bro i think that's welcome should go to up on the, the desert in the winter time <laughs> You and I look like Dude, uh, I got like you and I look like bare knuckle boxers. That's ridiculous, over man. And we've never touched a soul with our knuckles. Uh, I haven't. I touched a soul in my shoe with my knuckle once. I think I fell and oh out. no. But um, Century of the Self, <laughs> yes, four part documentary on BBC back in like it was a 2000 or 2005 or something. I think it's 2000. In between those, two, 2002, okay. right so around there. Between 15 and 20 years ago. It's not an HD, and that made me very sad. It was very 4x3. I was not happy. <laughs> I was not happy with a 4x3, uh, not 16x9 uh, widescreen. But um, basically what it spoke about is how Freud's ideas from Europe. Uh, Dr. Sigmund Freud. Dr. Sigmund Freud. He... He was talking about the darkness of humanity and how we always fight to keep it in. Basically, that's our we are evil people fighting that enemy all the time. That's how we should treat ourselves. Suppression. His cousin, Edward Bernays, or nephew, 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 nephew correct. Sir. Edward Bernays comes to the United States, starts public relate the, the, the term public relations, starts public relations and manipulates all people using Freud's ideas on how to manipulate them and keeping them suppressed. And then it goes through decade after decade from the twenties on them. Yeah. Yeah. Right about Cause the it was right after world war one. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Uh, and then continue, uh, expound uh, on that. episode three was the sixties and seventies and how there was a backlash against that. And I mean, the way I saw uh, the last part we did episode three was it was kind of the hippie movement in a way. Well, it, ran, it led into Reagan there at the end, actually. Yes, in the 80s. It, yeah, the sixties, seventies, uh, and then how Reagan got elected in nineteen um, eighty, inaugurated in eighty one, and how um, the public relations movement and how focus groups and um, how the ideas of psychoanalysis played into politics, um, not only here but in the UK, and how Margaret Thatcher got elected in the UK. Yeah, very, very interesting as a whole um but basically it just showed like uh, there was the movement from freud and then there was a backlash but then they utilized the freudian techniques anyway to utilize the backlash when they went to the individual from from the group right from the collective and now they're capitalizing on that and that's kind of where we are now right and that's part four that's part four um basically it just goes into how the politics and everything about i mean i'd say about politics the businesses now own the politics and how clearly that seem to be by the end of this episode and this part four takes place in the u.s and in the uk in the 90s correct yes sir so it had a lot to do with um the end of the reagan era and and how clinton came into power as well as the struggle with the the the, the conservative and the liberal parties in the uk as well yes yeah, and, and what they had was, uh, they were talking about the 70s in, in Britain. 
there was a big recession. Business started to look at the desires and emotions of the consumer yeah. instead of making the mass production stuff. UK was like almost like trailing us a little bit. It's almost they like lagged just a hair. But we we had a pretty bad economic crisis in the 70s oh, as yeah, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. You and I were born in the 70s, so we didn't really directly experience yeah, it. Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, I remember a couple of gas lines when I was really little and how big all the damn cars were you know yeah my dad had a 69 impala that was the size of rhode island my dad had a chevelle Ma malibu <laughs> it's like, and, dude and was, painted of course green. it was it's fucking beautiful <laughs> love my dad um yeah and and what it does was so they 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 turned to focus groups in great britain and they started turning things around or the politics started turning things around they started looking at um doing focus groups and everything in britain and it was uh it was a new individualism. They didn't want to be seen as social classes, but individuals free to express themselves, which that's where we are now. I mean, we are the United States. I would is arguably the birth of true individual freedoms. Of course. So in a weird way, we're kind of a victim of that. But it's funny because Freud saw the darkness in humanity. It wasn't about us being allowed to have our individual rights. It's expressing them. That was a problem, it seemed. But um, we are very expressive, right? The Constitution well, yeah. protects all of that those expressions as long as it's peaceful. Yes, of course. Which is beautiful. So um, we didn't want to have the same as everybody else. That's what that seemed to be the theme of this, right? It's like, no, we want to be different. But you know, you're buying, you're you're still not buying mass produced, but it's a lot more, you know, pointed towards di it. Kind of sectioned off people into different groups. So it was semi-individual but it still had some mass production to it because you sell it to sell product so they wanted you to like this style like a clean style or a french country or whatnot right yeah i found that very interesting that the, the numerous couples from the uk that they interviewed in their homes and the home and it was whatever probably in the what early to mid 80s and they they all basically said the same thing that they didn't want to have the same style and the same material things that everyone else had it was the same it was almost like the same verbiage it was very interesting was how interesting. they how the how they articulated themselves and they showed their houses and they were all different and they had these whole, this one couple had these horrible drapes i was like oh my god and they were probably 30 years old I'm like those shits are terrible man <laughs> not that i'm an interior designer but damn burn it i think they were dated to, they were new then yeah right yes <laughs> before they took the interview um well it just reminds me of like ikea because we talk about the individual and then i think like well ikea is mass produced and we we were fortunate to be in a city that has an ikea and that, that place is the hell dude. the line is around the building three <sighs> times and it's just ridiculous however what i found is that you can still have individual individuality within mass production like I can choose different color grain style like i can have this bookcase but i can have that chest of drawers or i can have this bed frame or whatever so it did like the mod it's almost a modular mix and match design if you want but it has a general clean overall feel right yeah of course i so get it it's kind of streamlined it's, it's interesting though because it's technically i would consider that mass produced well, yeah but they're doing good things when i die and go to hell it's it's ikea bro i, I don't mind ikea i hate i get lost and the arrows and shit and then like people stop in the middle of the aisle and they're like mm, stay on target <laughs> <laughs> oh ikea one, is friend. the best no it's i get what you're saying <laughs> but i went like we had an ikea in in philadelphia area so i grew up like going to ikea was like a thing for us so it was like this and stuff because it was different it's not as popular as it is now obviously they've grown right. and added yeah. stores right. and now it's just like everywhere right yeah but um it's pretty interesting so anyway that was just a thought on that but it was like something about people were classified by their inner psychological needs but then we had the thing with product placement right interviews of stars would have products attached to them so you couldn't you couldn't get an interview with you know who uh george clooney if if you you had to put coke, a Coke can down next to him when you take the picture, or he had to mention Coke three times in the article. It was like, it's a very interesting thing of how they how they married those two, right? To keep us kind of manipulated, interested, engaged, whatever you know, because we love that stuff. It's almost like, to your point, they the corporations owned that they they owned the celebrity 
and then therefore the celebrity and the corporation own the readers or the listeners or the viewers in a, in a strange way. Yeah, they absolutely did. I mean, completely unconsciously. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But if you, I mean, the one picture from the sun in uh, the UK, I, I have no idea who they were. A couple of celebrities and they were on a, a moped or a scooter and there was a pizza hut. The guy was holding the pizza hut box. It was a model who said she liked pizza or something. Yeah. And they had to have pizza hut. And I thought there's no way these people eat fucking pizza hut. Right. I mean, c come on. And then there was a second picture where they had to be eating the pizza hut. So why, why wouldn't you just, just, I didn't understand that. I, I thought that was very strange. You know, I agree 100%. Oh, technical difficulties, we're people. Some difficult, difficult. Oh my God, we're hearing very shit. odd. I'm wondering what that is, my friend. Talk about Pizza Hut. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix it. And yeah, go. you're right. Pizza Hut is uh, no. The Pizza Hut thing was really crazy because it was like a supermodel. It's like, yeah, that's the pizza she eats or something. And you're just like, whatever. Pizza Hut. I don't know. If that's it, bro. That's not it. No, I don't think it's us. It's it's just been happening. I think it, maybe I'm rubbing my feet together, clicking my heels three times because I got my ruby shoes on, and I want to go to uh, Oz or something like that. But uh, okay, so so it brought the desires of the individual to the center of society and encouraged business to take over from government the role of fulfilling the needs of the people. And that was very an, an interesting statement that was made. I agree. Did you did you pick up on that specific kind of statement when you watched it? Can you repeat the statement, please? The statement is con, uh, consumer or I'm sorry, they encouraged business to take over from the government the role of fulfilling the needs of the people. It's kind of, I find it a little disturbing actually. Like why, why can't a person fulfill their own needs? Why do you need an outside influence to do that at all? Right. So it's almost, I, I, I don't, I'm going to sound crazy. It's almost like you're being brainwashed. Or you're being manipulated into thinking a certain way. We were being groomed. Yeah. We, okay, okay, groomed. Sure. If you want to say that. They were certainly using humanity against a portion of humanity against us. Right? Because remember, there there are anti there Freud's not correct nor incorrect. Well, it's his it's Freud just has his own theory about the human psyche, right? Whether he's right or wrong, I mean, obviously, there's a bunch of people that disagree with him. Correct. So that's it's just a theory, right? And and some of his hold water, and some of the other sides that say people are generally good hold water too, right? It just depends on when and how you see it and how it comes out, right? I think we've talked about Freud tends to be come out when your back's against the wall or you feel threatened in some way or there's limited research. Like the darkness comes out when you when your back when you have to when it has to. Or when you feel like you're pushed to that level. Do you mean like a survival? Like a survival instinct? In a weird way, because that's how they harped on us. That's how they got us to believe certain things, right? Our nationalism, patriotism, pride, you know, those types of things can get, can turn dark pretty quickly, right? They can turn bad. Like there was, there was a rally yesterday and there was, there was an, yeah, there were protesters for one of the, one of the presidential candidates. Oh. And then there were anti protesters and twenty and four people were stabbed. Where was this? So, Washington, DC. Oh, okay. So, just once again, I'm not I don't That's a don't, historical fact. Right, that's it's not a historical we're thing. not taking it's sides. That last night. That's why I, I don't I, even talk I, about who it is. I was unaware there was a protest, so I right. feign but, ignorance. <laughs> but I think what it is is one side <laughs> feels like they're gonna lose. Yeah. And, and their backs against the wall and this oh, is their now last, I get you. the okay. last way of doing it. Okay. And then it erupts to this darkness I okay mean, i now I, I didn't understand your your point at first now i do understand yeah. okay just in general cool. I, yeah, yeah, yeah i don't make good points bro no i i get you, I, you do and now i understand i didn't get it at first yeah i don't communicate so good i don't talk to good stuff but uh so consumers are encouraged to see satisfaction of their desires as the overriding pri priority now to your point great question right why why are we looking towards others and not ourselves and this is what is interesting about this not conscious in my opinion you and i have different slightly different philosophies we're gen we're both good people but we well, have speak for yourself yeah well you're awesome person. You're just, <laughs> that wasn't what i good. meant but okay i, I know oh, but um, we have philosophies that slightly different in some things 
we have a lot that align, but we do have ones that differ. But the, but the reason we can discuss these openly is because you and I take personal accountability into effect about we shouldn't be looking outward towards other people helping us in, yeah. in a way. Like a lot of it is ourselves helping ourselves. Now that doesn't mean we don't believe in community or helping others, nor it is hard for us though, because we are pretty prideful people to ask for help. So, we, but we take personal accountability. That's why I think we're as good as we are with our differences, because when it comes down to it, you're not different because you're asking for something. And I'm not different because I'm not willing to give something in a weird way. I completely understand. Okay. Do you, okay. Cool. I completely understand and I completely agree. And I would like to add to that, that I am a firm believer in the idea and I've, I, I, I hate to ugh, informational barfage. I, I hate to bring it up uh, the civil discourse. I, I love to have conversations like this or with anyone about anything. If you can be civil and a lot of times, not a lot of times, sometimes some people can't be civil. And that's where I'm like, okay, you're not being nice anymore. And you're now attacking me personally because of a belief or an opinion or whatever word you want to use. So I'm not going to continue this conversation. So that's why you and I can have these conversations because yeah, we don't agree on everything and we admit that all the time, but yet we can continue to have a conversation because we respect each other. Right. Where a lot of people lose sight of that. I agree. And I just think, but it does come from our core values of we're pretty hardworking. We're hardworking yes, people. Sir. And we, we do believe that we help ourselves. Well, yeah. And that is a general thing. Absolutely. And I mean, I told, and I, please stop me if I've said this before. I told my mom. Stop. No, I'm just kidding. I just please can't. reply stop to stop receiving <laughs> these text messages. Uh, <laughs> we used to tell that story. <laughs> I told my mom just... Uh, before the election, she was ranting about whatever. I don't know. I wasn't listening. Um, sorry. <laughs> Is that mean and terrible, Mom? I almost lost my soda. Uh, uh, and I said, Mom, my it doesn't matter. My life is what I make it. You know, presidents have come and gone, and I work hard, and I have a, I, you know, I, I've always had a job, and that's not going to change. I'm going to work hard no matter what I'm doing, no matter who the president is or who the senator is or who the the town council gesture of whateverville. It doesn't it's not going to change the supreme alien. The supreme alien being in charge of production and efficiency quadrant 7. It doesn't matter. Next to the monolith in Utah. Alexa. So uh, uh it doesn't matter who who is my life is what I make it. That's the point of that. Sorry. Go. <laughs> so once again, back, back to this part, but one, we, we talk about these things because it does matter, but consumers, once again, were encouraged to see the satisfaction of their desires as the overriding priority. Once again, it's a satisfaction of each individual's desires. There are 330 million people in a, in this country. Yeah. How can anything get really done if there are 330 million differing opinions? If you, if everyone, like, I'm sorry, it's really makes society challenging. I I, I agree. It, it's you know there's there are some prices to pay to make civ civility and sometimes of this size. You, you know have I mean? to you have to really try to do what's best for the majority, and you can't make everyone happy all of the time, and that's true with everything. Right. I, I mean, that's just you have 24 people over for Christmas dinner pre COVID, and. You can't make everybody happy. Oh, I like the potatoes this way, and I like potatoes that way. Auntie, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, you, it's yeah. true with everything. It's just right. the way it is. Like, all the concerts I go to, oh, yeah, I really wish they wouldn't have played that song, but they played this song. It's true with everything. Right. So you can't make 330 million people happy with some presidential or senatorial or congressional decision. Someone's always going to be pissed. Right. Now, that's, th that's the weird part, right? You do have to... Dance a fine line of not stepping on people to do this, right? Yeah. And that, you know, we talked about inequalities in general. We're not going to get in the weeds about it, but those are still very challenging conversations to well, have. Of course. Because it is what's, we can't just be 100% utilitarian because we do the, what's that train, the train or the trolley exercise? Have you ever heard that? No. Okay. So there's a trolley going down the track and it's headed towards, uh, towards a baby in a stroller that's on the track. 
Okay. They can switch the track, but there are five elderly people in wheelchairs stuck on the track here. This is here. a terrible story. Well, this is the point, though. <laughs> w- what do you choose? Sorry. Do you uh, choose? Can you stop the train? No. Can, do you choose? Can you derail to, the train? No. Do you have to. You have to choose the one or the five. Now, do you choose the five that have had full lives already and lived their life, and the baby hasn't had that chance, or do you choose the five people because five people is more than one? I understand. Yeah. Once again, but that's that's kind of do how. Do I have to answer? No, no. Thank God. No, I'm not asking you to answer. <laughs> I'm saying that's the thought thought experiment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's how it works. Yeah. And it sucks because, yes, people are being unfortunately mistreated or unequal in some places because of the result of the utilitarian view of things of it. The other thing might be better for the law. Uh, right. They're trying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The again, majority is, is, uh, is, 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 should always be the focus. We try to yeah. do the most good for the most people right. all of the time. And that's what. And basically, this new thing became. This was the new and better form of democracy. Was each and you know everyone's individual desires taking priority, and we're seeing that play out. And that's what's funny about it. Fifteen to twenty years later, after this documentary. Well, the documentary, but this is this was. They were talking about things that happened in what nineteen ninety one. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, they. That's where it began, right? You know. So that's that's thirty years ago, right? If not even before then yeah but that's where it began we're talking about where but what i'm saying is we're seeing what they came up to like the conclusion of is exactly where we are now it looks like i would it's agree like they saw that I, I i would sadly agree um so some so what what they were afraid of is that it's some the most selfish and greedy aspects of human nature do you remember the thing where they're saying you work so hard for this why give it up right you've you've lived your life you've contributed to society that's kind of how the reagan view was yes, right keep yes. your money and, and all right. that stuff so that's where we are with that uh what are your thoughts up to this point so far on the uh on the I, i'm good i think you've covered it okay so um democratic party persuaded that they had common interests with others now what initially the democratic party just did what they thought was best for you that's that's the way they kind of painted that right that was the thought is pre-clinton yeah Pre-Clinton, right? The old Democratic Party kind of looked at the world as like, we um, we we have an idea what we think is best for everyone, so we're going to go that way. So they had like, they had a platform agenda or whatever, not the agenda, but they had an idea of how they wanted to do things, which is good. It's good to have a plan, right? A good right, idea of how, how they think. wanted to govern is what you're saying. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so this Philip Gould guy was brought in. Right to help the Labour Party. Labour Party was the more liberal party okay? in the UK. In the UK, okay. He said that they stopped listening to the people, so they had to reconnect. The Labour Party stopped listening to the people. Correct. Okay. So they had to reconnect the Labour Party with lost voters, and then they started these focus groups that we talked about. They found that people started to treat government like business. They could dictate what they wanted because they paid taxes. That's how they kind of people started feeling semi entitled by that. Yeah, that's you your that? word though. That's not. They did say entitled. They did? I believe they did. I, I'll check it again. And if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm wrong, but I believe they did. But go ahead. Uh, um, tell me what your thoughts on that what, or what you got from it. Well, that's the focus groups where... Is that... That's, that's pre-Tony Blair, correct? Yes. So that's the focus group where... They were saying, "Oh, we're going to vote for the Labor Party. We're going to vote for the Labor Party. We're going to, which is the the more liberal. That's basically the Democratic Party of the United Kingdom, and the focus groups on both sides, the liberal and the conservative parties, were saying, um, were the polls were contradicting what the focus groups were saying. Yes. So the polls were saying, "Oh, the 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 Labor Party is going to win," but the focus groups were saying they were not. Right. So they again they were contradicting each other and they put their all their faith the Labour Party, the Liberal Party put all their faith in the polls and they lost the focus groups actually, right? Didn't they say because they thought the focus group was on the Labour Party side. It was the polls that came out later that showed that right? Isn't that what you said? Uh well, the focus group said that the Labour Party was going to win. But then after, but they was, ended up voting they, conservative, right? And the polls coming out after were the ones that showed that that was not a true statement. Yeah, so, so they put all their faith in the focus group. I just want to be clear about what they put their faith in, right? Well, but so did the conservative party did too. 
They, the polls show the Labour Party ahead and the Conservative Party also had focus groups that said the Conservative Party was going to win, even though they were losing in the polls. Oh, I thought it, I had it no, backwards. No, it was, then. yeah, I, both. I, I, well, the thing was, though, if you watch the guy who won, I forget the guy who actually yeah, won. Uh, yeah, I know. I can see his face. I see his face, too. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But basically, he said... That's not what we're seeing in the polls. Yes. Remember? He said so I have he a, sounded very comfortable correct. about that. Correct. So, that, so he wasn't scared. I don't think he no, put faith in anything. No, he wasn't scared at all. Right. And he, he totally blew off the polls right. because I thought it was a, his focus, focus groups, groups oh, that's were cool. saying, that's bull, the polls are bullshit. You're going to win. It. And he, was, he had this air, this confidence that, ah, I'm not going to worry about that yeah. shit. I'm, I'm kick ass. Yeah. And I was like, that was very impressive. And the dude goes on to win. You precogged me, bro. Because oh, that's what it was. I was. Let sorry. me read. Polls show that even <laughs> though they. Oh, I had it. See, that's why I have this. Maybe my notes wrong, but I had Gold. First of all, Gould said that the Labor Party would lose in '92, and they're like, "No, we're not. We're fucking crushing." He's it. the only one, right? That that had it right, right? And they brought him in to yes. help with this, and he's telling them exactly what's going to happen. Correct. And they basically kind of poo pooed him in a weird right, way. Right. Right. So I have it as the polls oh, show. Right. The Labor the, Party believed. The polls, but this the focus groups on both sides said the conservatives would win. Yes. I'm sorry. I, okay. Yes, I apologize. And I, I apologize if no, no, I no. miss. That's all it. me, dude. No. Okay. So the polls show that even though they said they were voting one way, they were actually voting the other way, but too embarrassed to admit it. Yes. And that's where the focus yes. group pulled that out. Now, does that remind you of 2016? Uh... A certain female was supposed to win like 92 percent oh to yeah 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 i was like right i mean <laughs> i forgot who's running <laughs> um well this guy i remember dispatch. i remember the huge but i from the huge um dude i got problems but um i i think that thing's been on me way too long bro yeah put it on you for a second dude. yeah put on us put on your pullover but we got fresh air in here it kind of feels nice i like the fresh air uh, i'll have a cold tonight but that's okay i'll be <laughs> But it's good. Fresh air is good. Um, but yeah, so it reminded me very much of that. People were saying this other person and then the other person actually won. That's a very good point, And that did not cross my mind. So anyway, ooh, so Gould eventually left Britain to go to the Clinton campaign in 92. Yes, sir. So where we're at now is Clinton tailored policies to match what people wanted. Reactive politics. And you're like... So today they want chocolate, not vanilla. So he's like, <laughs> I'm all for, I like to say that I like chocolate. I like chocolate's greatest. I did not have sex relations with that chocolate. Oh. And the next thing you know, like next week, they're like strawberry. Can I get a Neapolitan, bro? Go. Yeah. That, I was just going to go with that, bro. Stop it. Yeah. But go ahead. That's all. I just like Neapolitans. Oh. Can I get an ice cream sandwich up in here? So they use these focus groups and they just tailored their policies to mirror these people, and it tend to be the swing voters, right? Only the swing yes. voters turn tends to be the suburban people because suburbanites can be a little, they can be both conservative and liberal depending on from where they came. And, uh, M many reasons. Yeah. Generally the metropolitan areas are more liberal. Yeah. Generally the rural areas are more conservative. Yes. And or so it's urban is more liberal. Rural is more conservative. The suburb is kind of like this the split weird kind of hybrid -y kind of place from the transition from urban to rural. Yeah, I and get it. It has a lot of people who work in the city, but it also has some people who work outside of the city as well. So, yeah, you know, so it, it has this very big mix and those are always the swing voters in all cases. Okay. I would guess, right? I guess Just I never really thought about that, but it sounds logical because of their mentality, right? Sure. So what they did was they said they were, uh, Clinton was elected. Okay. On, when you say oh, they, what are you talking about? I don't remember. So Clinton, are you talking about the focus groups put on by the 1992 Clinton campaign? Yes. Okay. So, uh, well, let's start with Bush one because he said no new taxes. Remember the whole new new taxes? Yeah, thing. it's an Omega Death song. They didn't bring that up. They didn't bring that up in the in the thing. Read my but, lips. Right. He said that, but then he had to. Yeah. And Clinton came in because they didn't, people wanted tax cuts, so they go. He said, I'm cutting taxes and we're going to increase welfare. And the way they were going to do that, or well, not welfare, but welfare programs. And how they were going to do that was they were going to cut the military budget. Defense spending. Right. And they'll be fine. They thought that was enough. But then when he got elected. Yes. What happened? Do you remember what happened? Yes. There was a $300 billion deficit. So defense spending cuts were not sufficient. And he had to cut welfare and some. 
and something else and as military. well. And military. He had to cut and, well, military yeah. and welfare. Right, okay. Which is the one that you wanted to keep as a welfare, right? Yeah. But cut taxes. You so wanted he, to do health care reform. Right. Is that, was that also correct? Yeah, health care was part of so that. that. was, that was like the beginning. super pre-Obama care, right? that, Yeah, well, Hillary would have done it too, and that, and oh, that was yeah, the thing, yeah, right? Yeah. And that was, she was going to continue that, right? It was, it was really, they, they were the initiators. It's my opinion. Well, the Democratic Party of the early 90s to mid 90s were the initiators of the universal health care start really, yes like the real push yeah yeah which is fine that's that's their that's, philosophy that's Great. just history yeah good for them um so the budget was too big to cut taxes they won on the platform of cutting taxes but then they had to and eventually raise them right so the voters that switched to clinton in 92 they turned on them in two years i mean two years thank you uh, <laughs> in, all, in a mere two years, they turned and Republicans won both the House yeah, and, and the Congress Senate. Yeah. and Senate or, you know, Congress and the Senate, the House, both yeah. houses of Congress in a landslide. Yeah. And that's where Gingrich truly really came to prominence, whatever, in 94. Correct. And they they did. They were they had a lot of power at that point. So Clinton couldn't get anything done. Right. Because he had no, he had zero. Right. Anyway, so that's where we are in there because they they felt that Clinton like. They feel Clinton lied to him, but he basically told them what they wanted. He just told them what they wanted to do. He just didn't realize that reality wasn't going to match what they wanted, right? He thought he could make that happen, but it just wasn't possible. Just how it works. Do you think that, um, regardless, let's just take a step back for a second. So this guy gets elected, or a woman gets elected, and there's a $300 billion deficit. Do you think that that's something you should know? Like, hey, you might get elected. Here's some shit you should know about. Uh, aliens. Uh, uh, we don't have any money. Uh, other stuff. Do you, do you, do you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Excellent point. I mean, not, I mean, because I know you and I have talked about the, let's say, okay, hey, Inauguration Day, congratulations, uh, Jimmy Smith, President Smith, woo! Uh, then he has a bourbon, and then he had, and then he goes to sleep, and the next day he has a meeting, and you say they give him the Book of the Aliens. Do you think maybe pre-inauguration, that a new president should know if you're fucked ahead of time? Hammer! Uh-uh. <laughs> It's my opinion that they didn't, they weren't clear about it, but I would guess that that deficit, that budget deficit came out after he had already won, like after he was in office or they, you know how you have to ever run the numbers of the fiscal year? You're behind a year because you have to kind of calculate it all. Right. When the report came out, that's when they were like, oh, fuck. I don't think they had, they were privy to that knowledge. Prior. No, they, I don't think that's not the question. Well, you I just agree said, with you. You know, they need to owe money. Do you think that? No, because they care about getting elected, right? Like, I'm sorry, I hate to say that, but. Uh, they needed they were going to say what they they took the role of mirroring what people wanted not what was possible in, in my opinion and it was for one reason to get to to get in the white house right? power yeah well to 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 be the president right it makes sense so 96 comes around two years after 94 republicans turn the house turn or turn the turn congress turn the senate and um they turn to this Dick Morris guy. Dick Morris, this guy's a piece of work, huh? <laughs> I was thinking Dick Jones from uh, Robocop. Dick Jones! It was Dick Jones! Never mind. You don't get it. Go ahead. I don't get it. I watch, I watch Robocop. Freeze, dirtbag. <laughs> <laughs> um, Robopope. So, once again, in 96, Clinton's like, we're fucked like because he saw like that 94 just kicked him squarely in the ball so he and couldn't do anything when dick morris was interviewed and he was asked why did clinton hire you what was his response to win no to get elected no Damn it. save his butt oh yeah that's right that was what he's no say follow, follow that's what he yeah, said he said he save his butt because he was he the as you stated in ninety four, the the Republicans landslided. That's not a verb, but it's is now. And it's amazing, landslid uh, into home plate in both houses. So Clinton, there's no way he's going to win in ninety six without some crazy tactics to get shit done. Yeah. So 
he was, like you said, he was in serious trouble. There was no way you're going to win without doing something drastic. Yeah. And because of that, Clinton had to figure out the desires of the voters and appeal to them. Basically, once again, he had to appeal, tell, say what, what they wanted. He had to mirror. He had to be what everyone wanted. That's how he, that's how they felt the new way was going. Right. Because everyone's like, what about me? It just became very it's a century of the self, people. They're yeah, there's kind of they're kind selfish, of they're kind of pointing right. in a certain direction. Um, anyway, so they brought lifestyle market um sorry, instead of treating voters as targets, they would be treated as owners. Instead of being treated as like just numbers, they were actually gonna be treated as like you know, each vote matters, right? Like that's how the kind of small ball politics was yes, the word right. that they focused on the details. Um so they brought lifestyle marketing to politics for the first time. And they focus on the swing voter and segmented them into different lifestyle types, just like, just like focus with, groups with businesses have yeah, done for all this. Time. Right. Yes. But they the mentioned question? that they did that in previous episodes where they would segment people based upon but never their politically. shopping habits, right, or their the the way that they would spend their money or do different things. But now it's been shifted into a political platform. Right. It went from on how consum- you do things. Yes, it went from consumerism. Yeah. To now voterism or what on how you cast your vote absolutely um so in 90 in 96 they did the v chips school uniforms they had these real little they just did these little things right and what's funny is how who points to the republicans let's just okay hang on take a step back okay what's a v chip v chip was like a parental uh piece that you could put in your on your tv so kids can't watch explicit content and you have that now on all your streaming device like adult content no so it has cursing or nudity or whatever and you can okay you can kind of choose what but that was a new TV. thing but that was what that was a big 1995. push 95 right? cuz they thought the kids were being yes. cuz videos were increasing right tv was what people were watching even more and more tv computers they were on computers more so they had to be very careful about the kids and that's a true statement that that's not an oh no yeah statement. i just i i imagine that there's some people that don't know what a v-chip is yes and what you know Correct. when i was prepping for the today i i'm like oh yeah i forgot about the v-chips mm-hmm. so i was like oh yeah i remember that was the thing yeah well, the okay. funny thing is it's such a thing now we don't you and i have it on adult content allowed because we don't have children even near the house but if i have hulu or hbo or whatever i would turn off turn on parental control yeah. for sure yeah. i would use those oh yeah yeah i love that the options there right so well, of course and that was the thing is like they kind of made these things in there and, it, and what's really funny about it to me is i remember what you always heard was how the conservatives don't want you listening to filth and dirtiness tipper motherfucking gore did the <sighs> planet advisory clinton's did the v-chip like hello i'm just sorry but that's just truth right is that not history Yes. Okay, that's all um, about that part, right? So they played <laughs> small ball politics. I just once again, you and you and I don't have an affiliation with anyone. We are a shotgun splatter on the on the philosophical in the philosophical spectrum, are we not? Yes. Okay. So this is what I'm going to say all this to you, and then I'm just going to need your reaction. So they had uh, Robert Reich was one of Clinton's people, and he was the one Ooh, the, the guy, guy with, with the, the beard. beard. Okay. And he and Dick Morris have a conversation. Yeah, okay. And he goes, why are we focusing on these minute things? Robert Reich's like, why are we focusing on the, on these minute things? And Dick Morris says, if we don't, we might not get reelected. Robert Reich responds with, what's the point of getting reelected if we don't have a mandate to do anything once we're reelected? Dick Morris, what's the point of having a mandate if you can't get reelected? Isn't the ultimate goal getting reelected? And go. <clears throat> Obviously, they're both right. I, I, I'm not, I have no political aspirations at all. I have no desire to have control or power over anyone. So I understand, I don't agree with it, but I understand what they're both saying. I get it. You can't, if you, if you, if I step back and I look at it from a purely wholesome and good perspective, let's say someone has no selfish motives and they truly want to do good for their fellow Americans, their fellow human beings, you can't do good from that 
perspective unless you get elected. So I, but obviously to get to that level, you probably didn't, you probably did some shit that was shady. Let's just be honest. So I, I don't, it's, it's horrible that that's the mentality because that's just, you know, that's the way it's always been. And I'm sure it's never going to change. Is that? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm trying to let you complete your thought because uh, I don't want to step. I'm, trying, I'm really. Are you, you sitting know on me. your hands, bro? Um, they're just in my pockets. Okay, pocketas. Pocketas. Uh, yes, but I took it from a different angle. I just looked at it like, I don't think people just said what they want to hear to get elected back in the day. I I truly believe they came in with, this is my plan. If you agree with the direction I think we should go, then you vote for me. Do you remember remember when we were a needs base and not a wants base we we didn't live yeah. in that however i need a new car right back then it was like this is pragmatically a good direction for the country to take we want to help it with a welfare system or we want to help with business or we want to help with xyz infrastructure this right. that and the other right. education yeah, yeah, yeah if you agree with us then you vote for us that's how it i i recall it being well, actually, I probably don't because no, we, we came in was, with Reagan. Yeah, so right. we probably didn't. No, it was way, way, way. That right. was that was like pre World War Two. Yeah, for sure. Even World, I would think even World War Two because that was a mass produced. That's when this really started. Yeah, so this was in the fifties is right. when it changed. But the twenty, yeah, the twenty, because it had nothing. In, it really was. I, I am this. This is my quote unquote platform, right? Wasn't they always talk about platform? Right. I want education for everyone i want safe streets and i want you know food on on everyone's table or well, whatever right right if you agree with my things you vote for me you don't go oh this week i like chocolate ice cream tomorrow next week i like strawberry okay i'll just change to fit what you want just to get reelected. yeah you don't you no longer even have a a, a foundation on which you can build you the direction you want your civilization to go in my opinion yes yeah and that obviously leads to your point right which is next about the uk yeah is that so well morris's strategy started working right and then this guy mark penn came up which is really interesting he had a call center in denver right yeah and yeah, they, yeah they were calling swing voters all night how many <laughs> look where we're at now like let me finish this statement and then i'll get your reaction where are we at now with that right mark penn <laughs> called called in denver called swing voters asked them what they wanted that's all i did Hey, we're interested in what you as an individual wants. Where are we now with these fucking things with the with being called or messaged or communicate? How are we being communicated with now on a constant basis during this, for example, this election, this election cycle? cycle. Yeah. Yeah, now it's all texting. How many did you get? Oh. At least one a day. I got up to five a day. Yeah, probably. yeah. So I would say four is the most I got in a day, but it was one a day for i don't know t t two months i don't know i i uh, to the point where i don't want to even look at my phone does that answer your question yeah. did you get a variety of them did i get a variety of them did you get a variety of different kinds like uh, let me use an example for me one was mark kelly's trying to take your guns oh yeah so, yeah, yeah so yeah. it had an agenda on it but then i've gotten other ones that said What's your likelihood of voting for Mark Kelly on a scale of one to five or voting for Trump or Biden on a scale of one to five? Have you, had, did you get any of those? Yeah, of course. So one was just more like a barrage advertisement thing. Well, it felt like. like the first one you mentioned was a scare tactic. Yeah. And, and, and it's the, the second one was the right? second one was more of a, like a focus group. Yes, correct. It was a polling. You were being polled. It was like a poll. Right. Yes. But it was prior. So I guess you can call polling whatever. But. Well, the focus, it was kind of a weird focusy group poly kind of thing. Just asking one to five. And like, I don't know how many people actually respond to those, but Rogan does say it best when he goes, the people that respond to those polls, just think about the people who respond to polls and what they're going to say. <laughs> it's like, you well, know, I don't think did it, it, did it used to be like that though? No, when no, did, that's what I'm saying. When These did, calls. It, when did polling take a shit? Because. Well, I feel like everything was always exit polls and maybe entrance polls, right? Or what they had polls like on the day of, and then it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So now it's months ahead. Now it's years ahead. Years, yeah. yeah. In this case, it seems like this calling thing, though, started us getting bombarded with oh, fucking texts at midnight. Okay. It's, this is, I mean, back in the day, the only medium they had was the phone. 
right, right? or so, door to door or, right Vo- voice or door to door right yeah. so you're knocking on doors or whatever and i'm like you know what knock on my door look at me eye to eye and tell me what you ask me i will be much more happy to speak with you face to face right really because you and i feel that i think you and i feel that way because we feel ah. that's well you're bothered by a fucking text and it's easy to tell him to fuck off on a text than it is face to face i don't want don't no both go away i you don't can, want you to knock on my door either yeah but you can but at least, you know you can appreciate the hustle though right no no I just don't leave, just leave me alone um <laughs> i love you man but I'm, I'm on the twits and people ask for podcast recommendations right but that's different i know but it's somebody knocking on my door yes i know but in that time when i agree i to your point yes but it's way better than getting a fucking midnight text Unless they knock on your door at midnight. Well, that would suck. Then you, then somebody's dying. <laughs> I mean, maybe not. I could be wrong. Back to you. Chuck. I understand. What I, yes. <laughs> Wait, all I'm saying is like at least you can you can understand the 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 work they're putting in the effort. The, yes, I understand the a, hustle. A bl- I get right. that point. A broad text I just don't just want to be bothered at all. No, I, like leave me the fuck alone. That's are, my point. Right. And we're allowed to do that. And what's awesome is that probably when it was door to door. Well, no, it's this fucking text stop thing. Like once again, don't tell me to fucking text. Stop. But my question regarding that me. is, is it at, is that even effective? If you text stop, they know that it's a valid number. Right, and they know that you reply, and then they, they can that sell that number side. to whoever they want. Right. And I know I sound like a crazy conspiracy theorist with that statement. Well, that's not an untrue statement. In the general business world, when you, I've stopped. You know how it says uh, unsubscribe. Yes, I've stopped unsubscribing because what they'll do is they will take that list. Your terms and conditions of unsubscribing is that they can sell that to whoever they want. Really, and it just trickles down, and everyone pays point zero zero one cent per per name point zero 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 one cent per name and it's just a volume game right and that's how these people monetize so you're unsubscribing to that one but you're going to get 10 more from others because the terms and conditions of you unsubscribing subscribes you to 10 other places for real that's what i've seen before i mean my when i started unsubscribing and stuff my my inbox blew up with a gazillion more of these unsolicited things i've seen that as well and I thought that as well, but I don't know if that's truly really true. I'm not going to say it's fact. I'm going to say that's my experience. That's that also I've seen. my and experience. Since I've stopped unsubscribing, it's like leveled off. That's just what I've seen. Anyway, so um, they came with. So when we when we back to the UK, the UK looked at the US and went, "Holy shit, that's how to do it!" Right? The Labor Party looked at Clinton, and, and this said, was the this oh. was after the '96 after election, the, right? So '96, Clinton does win. I don't, know, I don't know if it's eager. Look, like, let's be honest. Bob Dole was not exactly a move the needle candidate I, for the Republicans. Like, well, I'm, yeah. I'm not, that's just the truth. I mean, that's history, too. I, He's a good yeah. guy, but or whatever, but he wasn't engaging in any way. Elizabeth, his wife, was way more engaging. As, uh, she, You know, she, she's the Dole light. You know, the third light on, uh, on the back of cars? She was the Secretary of Transportation when that uh, went into effect. She's the one who initiated that. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, the safety light. That's yeah, the yeah, one yeah. called a Dole light. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's from Elizabeth Dole, America. Okay. okay. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, that's an, another int- tidbit, factoid. I, okay. Um, go so, us. Stop. No, stop us. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> um, go so stoplights. So they came to this welfare to work program. They had the hand up, not the hand out. And this that was, was in this, the U.S.? It was in the U.S., the hand up, not the hand out. And that was a, like one of these things. And then what they found, the Labor Party copied almost verbatim from the Clinton campaign. Yes. They were, tell me how they felt. How they, how did they feel about being copied? Do you remember that? Yeah. I mean, they, they, they were, it was a double-edged sword, right? They were, they were, they felt, I, I don't know, it was not honored, but like complimented. Like, wow, they, they thought enough of, of our ideas to, to use them. Then he goes, son of a bitch, they took our ideas. So it was a, it was this weird, in the same sentence the, the guy that was being interviewed was like, wow, that's really cool. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So that was very interesting that his response. That's exactly how I felt about it. And I always took that akin to like music lyrics or like a com- comedian joke. It's like, oh, yeah. You're, oh, wow. You honored it, but you also stole it. 
Yeah, which, like it's like a double edged sword. Like, yeah, when you're a content creator, like a comedian, though, that's your that's your intellectual property. Yeah, that's I agree stolen for sure. But it it is flattering when someone kind of make takes your ideas in a kin, like almost like that. So to your point, it was double edged, flattered and yeah, a little flattery. There you go. They, they yeah. were flattered. They were they felt uh, you know they were honored uh, in a weird way. They're like, oh, that's cool that they they kind of took our ideas. But then they're like, they took our ideas. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> So suburban voters were vital, right, with Tony Blair. Um, and they, they, I'm sorry, then we'll say the left, but we'll say, let's say liberal, whatever, the Labor Party, they then pandered to business in a way. Um, the Labor Party that fought against big business now was becoming a slave to it, is how they were doing because they're using the techniques of big business instead of dollars, votes. Yes, right, okay. Uh, yeah, Any, no, I, I, yeah, I didn't know where you were going with that point, but yeah, okay, now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and it's the same thing. It's like, okay, it's kind of like a stock price, you know? Oh, hey, the stock went up a dollar. Oh, hey, we got a thousand more votes. Right. It's the same tactic. Yeah. Oh, our there, polls just lost a thousand votes. Right, we, we got to so get those back. So it's the same. There's, it's the same type of mechanism. Yeah, and it and it's much quicker because business is very reactionary. I mean, if you don't react or change quickly, you die. Businesses die. Look at steel in the seventies for the United IBM States. IBM. Look at yeah, cars. Sears. Cars in the seventies were struggling. Studebaker. Because they brought the little car. The Japan brought over the little cars. Yeah. Right? So there's always change in business, but like in politics, yeah. it does create a problem because. Um, where, well, let's see, where are we at here? Um, they, okay. Well, before, in business, before, before we continue that part, yeah. but go ahead, go ahead. In business, it's more adapt or die, right? Politics, it's less like that. Up it was. It was less like that, but I don't, I mean, I'm, I, I'm curious where the future goes, I guess. Cause obviously this is in the late 1990s is where this is specifically talking about, but you know, with the younger generations, um, I'm curious where, is there any kind of political reform coming? Is there, what comes down the, comes down the pike regarding this specifically? That's a great question. I, I don't know. I'm just thinking, We're, you know. Please keep that, put a pin in that because we will discuss that. I've only got about a half a page left of notes. Come on, shut man. the hell yeah, up! Yeah, we're crushing through this. Half man. a page? Who are you? We're doing well. I I was very, I didn't know the direction it was going to go before I started watching it. So I, but I was committed to taking notes regardless. We should be committed. I knew <laughs> always. It's, all, <laughs> it's its own argument. But um, then they reflected back once again to the 1939 World's Fair, right? Democracy. All people's de were desires were fulfilled by business. It was all propaganda. It was all backed by companies to sell products. That's why that was in 1939. But that's what kind of started this whole trend, right? Bernays did not believe, I'm gonna, I'll read this part because I took this almost verbatim and then I'd love to see your reaction, not just or whatever. <laughs> I wanna like hear okay. and see your reaction, okay? Edward Bernays, the nephew of, of Dr. Freud. Did you see him on Letterman? Did you see that little yes. bit? That, that was hilarious. He's like, I know that if you call me doctor, it gives me more credibility. Or something. I thought, and I'm like, you motherfucker. He just, he nailed it. He nailed it yeah. right there. He just, he's he, incredibly intelligent. Yeah. He, fuck. And, but he thought so little of human humanity from his uncle. So Bernays did not believe that true democracy could work. Influenced strongly by Freud, that influence were, uh, I'm sorry, individuals were not driven by rational thought, by, by primitive, unconscious desires and feelings. Bernays thought it was too dangerous to let the masses ever have control over their own minds and go. What, what's your question? <laughs> what do you feel about the, now remember he's influenced all of the direction we've gone with this. And that's his base core foundation belief that it was too dangerous to let the masses guess who the masses are. Us. Us. Okay. Ever have control over their own minds. Not others, but their own. So he did it for them. Well, first of all, fuck that guy. Um, the theory kind of sounds sound, though. Doesn't well, it? I don't appreciate being manipulated. And I, I can see his point because, you know, if you, this is a horrible statement, if you look at the spectrum of humans, 
half are above average intelligence and half are below average intelligence. So for the people that are below average intelligence, do you need to steer them in the right direction so that society maintains some sense of order? I don't know. Um, thank God I'm not responsible for that shit. <laughs> I don't want that job. Do you see? Do you see, understand my point? I do. I mean, the Carlin bit of take the average intelligence of the people you know and think half of them are dumber than that. Like ta da ta da. Um, to your point though, even the average intelligence. Like remember, it's not even intelligence per se. You and I perceive the world differently, but it's not even intelligence. It's a perception. It's a intuitive almost with us, right? In a weird way they are influencing the desires and the emotions. They're not even doing it. They're doing it without the knowledge. They understand it. it's unconscious. Yeah. Right. So until you really pull back that veil, you're being manipulated because you don't know, even understand you are because they're playing with your feelings. They're not playing with your mind. Right. You're not even thinking about these things. You just feel them. Well, you know, yeah, but it, I think it's also the, the manipulation of, of humans to get them to do and to buy what he wanted. So, we, you know, when the governments that he worked for and the companies that he worked for wanted certain things, he would be the puppet master. Yeah. And he would, oh, hey, I'm going to get them to buy a Buick yeah. by doing this, this, and this, and this. But, but what's funny is Bernays didn't necessarily do it as much to sell as he meant to control. So yes. the, ne the next statement here, consumerism was a way of giving people the illusion of control while allowing a responsible elite to continue managing society. And is that statement still true today? We Can we put a pin in that one as well? How many? I don't have enough pins, bro. There's like three lines left. Okay, left. fuck off, go. So, okay. So the people's desire, okay, the people's desires in charge, democracy reduced from something that requires an active citizenry. That's kind of how you and I perceive democracy, an active citizenry, like courtesy, you know, work hard, contribute as much as we can, do what we can to help, right? Ask not what your country can do for you kind of thing, right? Yeah. That's kind of what we are, right? We're, we're an ask what we can do for our country. And in a weird way, we love the military, we respect police, we respect, you know, firefighter first responders of course uh, during this time of the COVID, hardest workers there are man thank you to all of the health workers like for real like we don't oh, have yeah. that skill we have i have no idea i i can't even put a band-aid on a cut so um <laughs> but anyway it you know it they changed democracy or they reduced it from something that required active citizenry to something which is predicated on pub on public as passive consumers what you're delivering them are doggy treats. You remember That's, that statement about no. the doggy treats at the end? No. No. So it was, right, it was towards the end. He said the people's desire, he said democracy is reduced. to like doggy. You're just basically like coddling them just minute by minute. Not as a big, full, as a big idea to go somewhere. You're basically just coddling them with just kind of throwing them treats. And are, is that a doggy treat like, oh, I bought a new Honda today, so that's a doggy treat? I think the doggy oh, treat. I got. Is it a material possession? It could be material. It could be even political. Like, I agree with you. Oh. Like, <laughs> not saying that. Like, um, or is it a vote? I agree with you, like, on a certain agenda or a certain phrase or something we can say. You know, like okay. uh, a movement or something like, oh, you like strawberry. I'm Fuck strawberry. Fuck yeah. Sour apple. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Sour apple's the best, right? That's basically what they're saying. Is there basically, we're, we're. We're, I'm saying that I agree with your individual desire, but I'm saying that to every individual, and that's kind of dangerous, in my opinion. To be a to be a government, it's it's dangerous, and since politics is in government, that makes it all dangerous. Yeah, opinion, right. So the new labor believed the propaganda; they believed in big business. Now, continuous democracy followed the will of the people was con. So I'm going to read this one. Um, I'll read this little blurb once again. And I'd love to hear your reaction on this. It was called continuous democracy. Followed the will of the people was contradictory. So there was an example about the rail system. Yeah. People that, said, yeah. Pilot, you're spending too much money on the rails. Why are you 
why are you paying money on the ground, bro? I want to fly. No, but they're saying they, <laughs> they shat on, on the public transportation or the rail system. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, we, we do. We, they defund or reduced funding. It atrophied. And then they're like, why the fuck aren't you investing in this shit earlier? Like, so the people changed their mind because of how they felt about it. So you're basically chasing feelings instead of a logical path to something. Yes. It's not one to two to three. It's how our conversations are. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck. Uh, oh my God. We're the British government. Pol government has become tangents. Oh, fuck. Yeah. We're going to call it tangents now. It's no longer government. Tangential government. The, the executive tangent, the judicial tangent and the legislative the naval tangent. salute tangent. Yes. So, um, so there's a rail thing, right? And then they blame the government for not funding it enough, basically in the rail system. Focus group politics are contradictory, irrational, and make it hard to decide what you're going to do if all you do is listen to massive individual opinions that are forever fluctuating, have no coherence, and crucially not set in context. So he, the example was, I want lower taxes and better public services. Right. Well, yeah. No shit. Who doesn't want... Everyone wants that dipshit. Right. Who doesn't want to spend less and get more? No shit. Like... Everybody. Right. And that's where the fo that's where they became contradictory, right? So tell me, tell me about what your thoughts are on all that. Yeah, that the rail thing really, I the fact that when Tony Blair won in whatever year that was ninety something, and then they didn't have a they won because of the focus groups and they they catered their message and their campaign to those focus groups, right? It's very smart and very intelligent love that right to win the dollar vote to win slash the, vote. to win the election that's what they did and that's brilliant right but then you get into office and you have no platform you have no direct you're directionless then you use more focus groups to help you govern well i i don't mind using focus groups in government to get the feel of the people i kind of equate it to the fireside chats with roosevelt and that's cool to connect to the people to show that the government is there for you because technically the government is servants. Everyone forgets that shit. So, but specifically the rails, you can't listen to a telecom engineer and go, yeah, I don't think you should put any money in the rail system. That's dumb. But, and then, then, then the rail system falls apart. You have to listen to and then the, you get pissed about it. Yeah. You, then I go, that's why didn't you put money in rails? Ugh. Ugh, get this why, guy out of office. Why'd you reduce funding? I can't believe bro. you did that shit. So De you defund the rail system. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> just you have to listen to the. I'm just saying that sounds very similar to something, right? I, you have to listen to the civil engineers and the railway engineers infrastructure and go, experts. Yes, the people that work on that shit every single day. They go, hey, look, in X number of months and years we're going to have a serious problem. Here's the priority list of things you have to fix. Here's the, if you want to expand the system here, X, Y, and Z, you have to listen to the experts. Chris Peralta, the telecom engineer is not a rail expert. Don't listen to his dumb ass when it comes to rail shit. Right. Hello. You would think the fucking prime minister of the United Kingdom would know that. Hammer. I wouldn't hire a physicist a for, a, th 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 for a chemistry problem. You know what I mean? I'd probably hire a chemist. Yeah, fucking think so. You know, um, but that was the thing is, yeah, they called you because you're a suburbanite in from the home office is where? Where was that? Gilbert AZ, Gilbert. bitches. So they're calling you like, bring, bring. Hello, is Christopher there? No, I don't answer my phone, man. I mean, hello, Christopher. Yes. yes. Um, Jelly good. What do you feel about the rail system? I think we should not invest any more money. Okay, done. Bye. And then... And pff, and, and then, then I, and then I go, hell no, we want more rails, bitches. Right. And you're one with them, ah. one of them picket signes. I'm a picket fence guy. Hell no, picket. we need more trains, bitches. We need more picket fences is what we need. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm all for picket fences over yes. pickets. I don't know. I think actually I like pickets. I, once again, constitutionalist, you and I right to, uh, freedom of expression and yes. assembly peaceably assemble. And yes. I love that. Um, so the Freudian view, once again, was fostered and encouraged by business because it produces ideal customers. The thing that got it was it sold products, right? So the products are now votes, and they use this tactic now to get your vote. That's basically what their conclusion was, Which, right? Do you consider that what they did? Do you consider that manipulation? Well, it's absolutely manipulation, it's my opinion. I'm I'm a small government person. That's my philosophy in general. Um, I 
I have read the Constitution. I hope we are we going to do one on it. I know we keep talking about doing stuff, but I love to. And go, you we, don't write we, it down, so which, right, that means I, we're never going to fucking do it. I know. So no, we're not going to do one. But we've done freedom of speech. We've done freedom of religion. And we're very clear about our the, stances. We about, did the Ten Commandments, bro. Yeah, we did that too. But we're very, <laughs> but we're very clear about our stance about, regardless of what you and I individually believe in our faith or whatever, that your personal is protected for it. Right? We're constitutionalists. You and I both are very strong into like personal individual because we also do take the accountability. Well, right? I I disagree with that, but that's not what this no, conversation no, is about. No, tell me, tell me what you think. No, I, I disagree with some of the Constitution. Oh, okay. Like, what is there a part? Just well, yeah, we just don't want to have this conversation no, just, now. Just pull one of them out. I just no. want to hear one, and then we'll move forward. I'm not going to undress it. I just want, I'm curious about the one Second of them. Amendment. Oh, okay, got it. That one's a good one. Um, so <laughs> back to you, Chuck. Yeah. So the Freudian view was encouraged by business because it made them ideal co consumers, right? But then we've now become the slaves of our own desires because we're it's just it's it's a moving we keep moving the goalposts we don't have it's my opinion that politics should be these are my general platforms be nice to people i like to be a little more fiscally conservative but you're welcome to do what you want as long as what you do doesn't harm anyone else and all these things like very general things now maybe it does get more drilled down the more people you have to deal with it's hard to scale right like it's easier to govern sweden or something with 10 million or 8 million people or whatever the number yeah is, i got your i see your point then it or 30 even 30 million in canada is one tenth the number of people in the united states right, right. Like, yeah it's hard to and and it's hard to be free like we are because look at the country that's bigger like china it i would i would venture a guess you almost need to be like hold More that structured. shit in right you need to reel that shit in because a billion people just a small percentage of that can be way is three is three times more dangerous than ours yeah than a small or percentage it could of be could be right and and especially if it's in a focused area yeah you know, it could really do damage so it's really hard but we've now become the slave of our own desires we've forgotten that we are more than that though like that was that's kind of the one thing about it is this was all our entire our childhood growth whatever and f up to 50 years prior to us was all clayed and molded by this bernays guy on freud's assumption that all we are evil and we have to suppress it and our desires and they manipulate us that way we are more we we, we are more to that aren't we more like I an would, onion yeah i absolutely would think so but yeah I, I agree that in every human there is the capability to be bad you know not just evil but bad right so as well as um amazing you know and and generous and kind and loving and and good but i don't i obviously my opinion freud the, this specific theory of freud is absolutely flawed yeah and but that's what's created us so now we are his theory because it's been practiced and now now it's part of our lexicon. Well, wait, but not Freud's theory. Bernays's practice of public relations, which it, in my opinion is not public relations. It's it's the use of marketing and advertising as manipulation of the masses for commercialism and for political gain. Right. But That's that was, my interpretation. Right. But it was based on Freud's belief that everyone's evil and they have to suppress it and they have to be controlled so bernays took the idea that they need to be controlled and then massaged it the way he massaged it to keep us in control through buying products and through this the way he did it would you he say he judged it oh he judged the hell out of that <laughs> so you had a couple questions uh That's no the, you done. you already you beat me All to right. the punch oh did you have anything else on that uh, stand by That's basically where we're at um yeah please sprinkle in uh what you feel Blah, dick morris mother trucker the stupidest title in the world yeah basically the title had something to do with uh eight people sipping wine and kettering had a control over what the government which does. is a city in the uk correct yeah, yes, okay sir. um individualism uh you all my notes you already covered sir focus groups versus the polls clinton in 92 94 96 tony blair Labor Party, 
Yeah, man, you already your notes are for once much more thorough than my own. Yeah, fuck you, man. I'm very I'm impressed, sorry. sir. I mean, On behalf namaste. of the Virgo committee, sir, you get two gold stars today. Sweet. I just wanted one, but thank Boom. you. One point nineteen gold stars, bro. Well, I just extrapolated it to today now and or to this world as we are, and all these things are very much in play now. They reared their ugly heads. And we see this in everywhere. And I think, I feel like it goes faster, even with social dilemma, right? Because the idea is to get, keep you engaged, right? And they can manipulate you more the more they keep you engaged. And well, yeah, we now it. live in a much more digital world than when this was made in 2002, yeah. right? So yeah. that 18 years later, it, it, everything moves exponentially quicker, right? Yeah. From every perspective. Now you can click on your TV with the remote and... You can watch any movie ever made within 30 seconds. Yep. I mean, you might have to pay three ninety nine, but you can still do you it. You can still do it. And that that one fact alone is mind blowing. It's amazing. You know? And, and think about the greatness that that can do. But in this case, it can also exponentially spread the subconscious manipulation of us. Yeah, and that's, that's that the you know, yeah, the political side, it is what it is. To me, the the consumerism is that that does bother me because it material things don't make you happy you know Certainly the not. fact that there's a there's an emotional attachment to buying something like oh my god i got a new t-shirt oh my god i gotta get new shoes oh my god i gotta get a new purse not me but just one time why not you know oh my god i gotta get a new blah 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 and and i you know i was looking at a new car a year ago and then i thought man you don't need a new car what is wrong with you <laughs> you know yeah. Yeah. so but i just but I'm I'm guilty just like everybody else, right? But it's an emotional decision. And that's and we're all part of that system that's been built for, you know, sixty years, more seventy years. I'm good at math. It's certainly hard to unplug uh, from the system that's all around us, right? It's is it like the I mean, in a weird way, they created the matrix of consumerism. It's it's its own matrix and until you break free of that cycle. You're a slave to it just like anyone else. And as am I. I'm guilty of it too. I do my best to limit. I I had I had more emotional issues before and purchasing, buying things made me happy. But I've addressed a lot of those. I've Like I said, I'm the most emotionally happy I've been ever. And I'm not that consumer like I was that tick that you talk about from buying stuff, right? But we're getting that with social dilemma. It's like, oh, where's my next like or my it's kind of the same Yeah. It's weirdly that it's oddly weird, the same thing. That weird that weird hit in your head. A dopamine. Hit. That weird like oh it's like chocolate when you get a when you get a little heart or a like or a <laughs> thumbs up on the social media. Yeah, yeah it's and it's, it's the same terrible. thing that purchasing is. It's almost like get it's like getting a gift. A like is like getting a new gift. Like a like a I bought a new toy. I bought a new car. I bought a new this, that, and the other. It's it's just on because, a smaller because, scale. Because because purchasing something does this does the same thing as dope. Does it's when you buy something, hit, yeah. you does it release dopamine? Yeah, it's the same. It's okay, the same I don't hit, know that. It's, I'm well, it's like an instant satisfaction kind of okay. thing. You've okay. you've you've quelled your desire in that moment, right? Yeah, for so how long? But that's not what it is. It's about quelling that desire, and that's the hit, right? Right. We now just do it on a multitude level. Look. I'm staring at our downloads, bro. Why? I'm not gonna lie, because I love when we 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 have a little meeting. We're like, hey, how many we got? Oh, cool. We're here, here. We're much we're stoic about it. We're not like, oh my god, we're fucking rocking, or oh my god, it's the end of the world. Like if we don't get downloads. Yeah, we. However, yeah. we're very vigilant because we do know that that's important, right? In this, it's the one of the most important metrics of a podcast is that someone's listening. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I'm not gonna lie. I'm. I'm looking for that hit. It doesn't give me the hit as much because I'm very conscious of it per se. But I do understand what one extra listen does. You know, it, it's a good thing. It's well, a positive thing. So it does feel good when we see it. And look, we're I'm we're grateful to everyone who's given us a listen. So thank you to that. But at the same point, it's like, yeah, we're also just as much slaves to that dopamine hit. Slaves to the grind. Rock, rock, rock. So that's about it. So four parts. One, two, three, and four, I think. Or did it go A, J, four, and eight? Or H? Uh, one, two, Z, nine. Okay, thank you. Yes. I just Glad sure. <laughs> Watch them in that order. One, two, Z, nine. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it is very interesting. I mean, I would definitely recommend that. It, and it's only, 
it's like three and a half hours for all four parts. So yeah. it's very fascinating how easy, manip easily manipulated we are. It, and it's scary in that respect. Yeah. And to close it out, um, once again on the twits, people are asking for recommendations. Hi, I'm looking for a YouTube show or whatever. I go, I, I like documentaries. And we were in the midst of it. I think I was in part two. We finished part two of Century of the Self. Yeah. I recommended Century of the Self. And I got a personal message back from that person. She's like, thank you so much for recommending it. That just blew my mind, opened my eyes to the whole, like, the whole thing. Yeah. And you and I, that's all we want to do, right? We're yeah. not, we, we're here. We know that system, the 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 patterns kind of are blueprints, and we kind of it it seems repetitive in some cases, but it's just with different. We show how they rear their ugly head in different verticals, like politics, or yeah, how they rear their right. head in social media, how they rear their head with, uh, you know, with um, consumerism or other other things. Like we talked about law, or you know, the Ten Commandments, right? All right. these things we show how system. Catholic Church, right? We show how systems you how they use the manipulation on you. Yeah. That we're not telling you to change your mind. We're not telling you to change your mind, but we are here to kind of show people that, expose those truths. That's all. Agreed. Yes, cool. sir. Any closing arguments, please close it out for us, sir. Uh, uh anything you want to say? Yeah, but is there anything left on Century Self Part? No. Ket part ket, because it's four. Cuatro. But you, I believe you have something to say. I do. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. <laughs>